My name is Jeremy Ray and in this video I'm going to show you guys exactly how I went from literally being in high school not knowing what I wanted to do with my life to making over a million dollars or multi-million dollars in the e-commerce space. I've also got my old phone. This was like one of the phones that I had when I first started drop shipping. And the reason I make this video is not to boast or brag or anything like that in any sort of way. I just simply want to show you guys that it's possible and hopefully a couple of you watching this video might take some motivation from it. When I was younger, even before I was 15, when I really got started in e-commerce. I always had this thing in me that was wanting to start businesses. I always wanted to have nice things. I was always a kid that wanted to definitely, you know, have the stuff that I guess my friends had, have the, you know, nice things, have the things I saw on Instagram, all that. I always wanted to be able to have the nicest scooter, for example, if we were all scootering, which is something that we did, or have the nicest lacrosse stick because I played lacrosse, right? I always wanted those things, but I never wanted to have to ask for them. I never wanted to have to do anything because I knew that, oh, if I go and ask my parents, if I go and ask, you know, my friends, if I go and ask, my family members, right? Then it's reliant on them saying yes in order for me to get that thing. So at a young age, I kind of realized that, hey, money's not everything, but money is something that I could use as a tool to get what I want, the things that could fund my passions, the things that could push my passions further. So I saw that at a very, very young age. And once I saw that and realized that, I started to understand the importance of me, you know, getting out there and getting an education on these things. I kind of completely zoned out of school and started turning to YouTube. So YouTube was really my main source of kind of, you know, knowledge that I was getting and literally every day throughout school and after school, I would just watch YouTube on businesses, on how to do this, people doing DIYs, just anything that was really people giving experiences. And I think this is a really key point about my beginning part of my journey that you guys should take away is I was always looking for videos that were people telling stories about something they did or something they found out or something they learned. Because when you watch those type of videos, you get that person's story. You basically get a summary of everything they learned, the most important parts, and you could take that and use that in your own journey. So those type of videos are really important tried to have a scooter peg business. I had a lacrosse stringing business. I had a duct tape wallet business. I basically sold anything that me and my friends were into. If we were into something, I would figure out how to sell something within that. Through that, I ended up finding a real passion that was deeper. And that was what formulated into what it is now, which is building a school and doing the things that I long-term want to do. But what that feeling was, was basically me wanting to be able to provide, whether it was to provide for my goals and for myself or to provide for the people who I love around me. My main thing when I was a young kid that I noticed was I was trying to provide. I was always trying to be the one that would be able to take the friends out to lunch, be the one that would be able to make sure all my friends had the cool stuff. But as stuff gets real in life and you turn from a kid to a young adult, you start to realize that you have to get serious, right? You know, you got to go to college, right? Stuff like that. Parents typically say that to you, right? My parents um, kind of let me kind of learn by the fire and just kind of make my own mistakes, which was, you know, really cool. But most people get recommended, go to college, look for a job, this, that, this, right? And that's something that literally intoxifies your brain to make you forget about your goals and what you truly want to do. Because instead of you deciding, you're just getting told by somebody else who lived their life, but they didn't live your life. They don't know who you really are. They don't know what you think about when nobody's around. They don't know what you truly want to do, what truly makes you happy, because they're not you. So I had to go get a job as a janitor and I was literally mopping floors out of middle school, cleaning toilets, cutting blackberry bushes. It was called being a groundsman. And I had this mindset of, I want to do something different, but I was stuck doing this thing hourly every single day, being a groundsman right out of middle school. And I was pretty devastated. I was like 15 at the time. I was like, damn, this sucks because this has nothing to do with what I actually want to do in life. I'm only doing this for money. And it felt horrible. And I remember this one time I was sitting there with my boss, right? And he was like the lead janitor. And basically he had dropped out of high school in order to work as a janitor at the middle school that he went to. And that's still the, the same middle school that we were working at that day, right? And he's like, one day you'll get to where I am. I know that that was his passion, right? Which was cool because I knew that he was passionate about that. He liked doing what he did, which was good. But I was like, I got scared, you know? I was like, no way am I gonna be doing this for 30 years. And it's crazy because we always think, oh, you know, this is not, you know, it's not what I'm actually doing. I have all these plans, I have all these ideas. But I was being real with myself and I was like, in this position right now with this job, my life, if somebody else looked at it, would think I'm going that route, right? That's clearly what he thought. That's why he was saying those things to me, right? I decided a couple days later that on my 15 minute break, I was just going to leave and not come back. So basically I got a 15 minute break. I left and I did exactly that. I never came back. Basically what I learned, I have control of my life. I instantly got started in drop shipping. I had been researching drop shipping because I heard about it from a friend a little bit before this time I had been researching and I also got my teeth pulled. So I wasn't like having to go to school or anything. And I decided that I wanted to go full-time drop 
dropshipping. So basically from the day that I left, I started just learning as much as I possibly could about dropshipping. Started a store with one of my friends. That store didn't work at all. I was trying to also build a landscaping business. I wanted to basically build a landscaping business. So I was also trying that with my buddy. At the same time, that wasn't working out. I was trying to learn dropshipping. I started a store with my buddy. It didn't work out. It didn't go anywhere. It was called Broken Love. It was a chain store. Actually, if I pull out my phone, um, you guys could see this. This is actually really funny. So it's actually a chain store called Broken Love Co. And um, if I pull out my phone right now, you guys can actually see on my phone this literally th this business and literally shit we were doing with it. So this all a bit of time has passed from when I quit my job to when I started actually drop shipping and making money. But basically, once I started drop shipping, right, my first little chain store, if I can find in my camera roll, um, when we kind of started doing this. So if we go or no, it's up here a little bit. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. When we start showing off chains and stuff, I'm pretty sure I got some in my camera roll. So as we're scrolling down, see this okay yeah so as you guys can see right here there's literally no cap at all right broken love co you guys can see all these little you know logos i had this was my first drop shipping store ever i had these chains that i was selling i look at that content you guys back in the day that was crazy right so i was trying to basically put business cards in jeans at the mall i was trying to hand out cards in person at the mall to people i was trying all these different stuff and it didn't work at all i paid for an influencer shout out to promote a sticky bra i added that sticky bra to a chain store which made no sense but at the time for me i was like all right i'm gonna to test this paid this influencer for a shout out i lost all my money i thought i was gonna make like 10 grand i remember like the night before i sent the money i scheduled the post i was like i'm gonna make 10 grand tomorrow i can't wait to wake up it's gonna be crazy right and then i wake up and i didn't make anything i'm sitting there now with no money completely lost out on a shout out but the one thing that i do have is knowledge on what not to do so i basically try to use that in order to start another store so i was like i know what not to do now let me try to start another store so i started trying to build an actual brand and right here is the first logo I have for my company, Vulu, which is actually a women's clothing company that I started after this first store. When I started Vulu, I had like $50 to my name. So I didn't have any money. I was just starting it. I was like, I'm gonna do women's clothing. I know girls buy stuff online. I have a girlfriend. I'll ask her for advice. I'll ask her for opinions. So I started just basically making a women's clothing store, right? Selling all these bathing suits. You guys can see all my ads and stuff I was trying to run right here, custom content again. I actually literally took the camera from my photography class. So I took this photography class just to get access to the cameras and I was basically like hey I'm a, I gotta do homework da, 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 da. I'm gonna take this you can check the cameras out for the day or whatever right so I'd check it out and I'd go shoot a bunch of custom content then bring it back so it was super funny but uh, you guys you got to use your resources I didn't have money to buy a camera so started it to basically post a bunch of women's clothing on Instagram and eventually this girl hit me up from Lake Oswego I didn't know this girl she didn't know me I had no ties with the account so it was just out of coincidence but anyways this girl from Lake Oswego DM me and she's like can I be your ambassador and I was like well what's that and she's like oh you give me a discount code and then I go buy things from your store and promote your store you know on my Instagram by wearing your clothes I was like that sounds like a win-win for me I was like so yeah sure right so I made her a discount code 20% off I made it her name and then 20 I sent it to her and I was like hey go shop for whatever you get 20% off the whole store my margins were like 70% so 20% was nothing right so she ended up going and buying $80 worth of stuff from my store or $75 something and I literally shit my pants I was like what the fuck just happened I literally put up a store I got a DM and I just made money I was like like, oh my God, this is all that I needed to know like, that I could do this. Like it was the biggest proof of concept moment I think I've had in my entire life. Because when I felt that I was in the parking lot at my school, I felt that sale come through. I knew that I could do this. I knew that I could get two sales. If I could get one, I knew I could get two. If I could get two, I know I could get 10. If I could get 10, I know I could get 100,000. So I go home, buy this whiteboard on my way home. I start writing down, I'm literally down to like 20 bucks, right? And I start writing down everything, you know, that I was doing, all the projections, all the numbers that I could possibly be doing how well I could be doing in a year well I'm gonna be making this much money da, 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 just overall just super super hype that hypeness made me you know start thinking of creative ideas to make this continually happening right to make me continually making sales off ambassadors essentially well, I basically sat down and thought of a way to make a bunch of ambassadors happen for my brand a bunch of people continually come and want to be ambassadors and buy products so I started DMing every single other account on social media that was selling women's clothing I basically went on their accounts and I would look at who's following them 
them and just DM every single person who's following them and try to get people to join my ambassador team. And so basically, if you guys can see, we'll scroll down on my phone, you guys will be able to see, I was literally closing people out of the DM. I would DM somebody or a comment on their post and say, hey, DM me and I'd get a DM, I'd give them a discount code, I'd get them set up, they'd go buy, I'd say in order to activate your discount code, you have to buy something from the store and wear it, da 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 da. So I had all these girls wearing my women's you know, clothing, as you can see in my camera roll. I had all these DMs that were going out and I started to make real money. So as you can see this week, right? $5,000 this week, 6,000 store sessions, right? I had girls wearing my clothing, right? Here's another 1K day yesterday. I had this store doing well. I scaled it past six figures off of DMs. At this point, I have money. So I'm getting into Facebook ads. I'm getting into paid ads. I'm scaling this store. I'm making thousands of dollars per month from this women's clothing store that I started with literally less than $50. And my whole life's changing. I basically start to think of other ways I could make money. So I naturally start to build other Shopify stores, right? Because at this point, I have money. I'm investing in paid ads. I had like 20 grand sitting in my account, 30 grand or something, 50 grand. And I freaking literally spent like all of it on learning Facebook ads. I learned Facebook ads though. So now I'm making money off Facebook as well. And basically what happens is I start to branch out and start new Shopify stores. So I'm selling high ticket products. I have some stores that are selling lights. I'm selling anything that's trending, women's leggings, mini fridges, whatever's trending that I can find and sell on Facebook ads, I'm selling. At this point, I'm making a new store every single day. I'm testing an insane amount of products. I'm investing all the money that I'm making in expansion because I knew that, okay, if I just spend all this money back on my business, number one, I don't have to pay taxes on it because it's a write-off. And number two, it will spend money on possibly making me more money. So where's the money going to be better spent? So I essentially just spent all the money I was making back off making more businesses. And I was having so many businesses hit for me. At one point, I was bringing in thousands a day and I was absolutely tripping. I moved out of my parents' house. I moved in with Devon Cowell, who's actually the COO of Chris Line Academy. Now I've been working with Devon for a long time and he's literally a brother to me. I had a lot going on. I had a lot of stores running. I had a lot of knowledge in e-commerce at this point. A long time has passed. I've been making money for a little while and I basically decide to start teaching people how to do this because I was getting so many goddamn questions from everybody about how I was doing what I was doing. Tons of people were asking me how I was doing this, how I was doing that. So I got tired of answering people individually. So I made a bunch of videos, put them in a Google Drive and initially I was just sharing it with my friends who would ask about it, right? Because my thought behind it was now I don't have to answer each question individually, I could just send somebody a Google Drive folder and they could get all the info right there. I had the idea of, oh, you know, a lot of people would probably want this info. So I started talking about it a little more on social media. People were hitting me up about it. And I basically started to develop a learning program, which turned into Cash Culture, which was my first program that I ever had. Through this is where I met Cameron Howard, who's actually my business partner in Chris Line Academy. And you guys can find Cameron Howard all over social media. He's working at Starbucks at the time. Cameron gets in my personal mentorship. We build a store together. He becomes super successful. And essentially what I learned from that experience is that I could teach, Cameron went on to be one of my, he, my most successful student ever. We're now business partners. It's a crazy story, but anyways, Cam changed my life in a way that I haven't had my life changed prior to that experience. And that was Cameron saw insane success off of what I was helping with, um, as well as you know some of my students in the past, but Cameron was a really, really big one. He saw a ton of success and I learned that, wow, by me sharing this knowledge that I'm getting, like, it's worth more than just me. All these losses I went through, all these bad things I did, or all these things that didn't work out for me, all these things I had, you know, fail were no longer failures because they were things that I could teach other people and help them avoid. Literally everything that I do, if it's a learning experience, it's a win. So I stopped thinking about failure at all at that point and started thinking, I'm just going to do as much as I can every single day, acquire as much knowledge as I can and get as good as possible and share this knowledge with others as well. Then I found music. And this is a really cool part of the story because music is a passion of mine that was totally separate from business, but that kind of collided together. So the whole reason I got started in business in the first place was to be able to fund my passions. One of my biggest passions was music and it cost a lot of money to do. So I wanted to make money. So I got into business when I was younger, right? So anyways, I always knew that was a passion of mine, but I had the opportunity to basically pursue our music with one of my best friends, um, whose name is Justin. And basically it's Devon's brother, really funny enough. And I basically decide to pursue this music career for a year. And I had a bunch of money sitting in the bank, but at this point I wanted to go full music and learn this stuff completely. So I basically quit everything regarding business and I moved to LA with Justin and basically moved down there. I'm going with meeting with all these cool producers, meeting all these cool people. And I have a savings account. So I'm just basically just rolling off my savings account and basically just risking everything. I put like all my businesses mainly on pause. I was still running some stuff, but only the remote stuff. Everything else was really on pause because I wanted to fully focus on music because I was like, okay, I got a bunch of money saved up in order to spend on bettering myself. So let me pursue this passion while I have the chance because I looked at it this way. Okay, I can try to pursue music now and risk my 
businesses or what I have going for a year, or I can, you know, not do this and regret it later on or regret the fact that I didn't take advantage of the opportunity to move down to LA and all this stuff. So anyways, I was like, I'm not going to miss out on that opportunity. I never want to miss out on an opportunity in life that is important to me. And that's one of my passions and music was. So I decided to take it. I decided to risk basically everything and take that trip to LA and basically move down there. And on the first day, I completely snapped my ankle in half, which was pretty sucky. Um, probably like a week into that whole LA move, I ended up having to move back because I had to get surgery on my ankle and all this bullshit, whatever. Right. But basically I was still working on music the whole time. You know, I had had everything that I needed to make music just on my computer and a setup. I had an interface, mic, all that stuff. And I basically was just pursuing music fully. Justin moved back to Oregon as well as soon as I broke my ankle and we were just basically, you know, working on music from my place. Right. And so we were basically just working on music 24 seven, meeting connections, you know, making music, making at least a song a day. I was learning so much good stuff. No matter how risky it is, it's way riskier to not pursue something you love. That's why so many people end up not loving their life is because they choose to not pursue something that they love because it's too risky. I do not care about the risk. I care about me pursuing what I love. So I basically had risk not even in my mind. I took that opportunity. It changed my life forever. I became really, you know, well versed in understanding the music industry more than I ever have. I probably learned 10 years of music in one year because I had money to spend and I was traveling and doing this, meeting the best people. I met people who worked with Black Bear. I met people who worked with MGK. All these crazy people I met. I'd done all this stuff at such an early age and I realized that, wow, all this stuff that I've done, other people could do and other people want to do, they just don't because they're scared. So I was like, damn, if I could fix that problem and help other people do this stuff too and have enough courage and drive and passion to pursue their goals, that would become a worldwide impact. And I wanted to be able to impact the world in a positive way, leave a positive message behind. So I started to heavily work on that. I had a lot of brands going, stuff like that, but I also was working heavily on the idea of being able to develop an educational program system that could help people pursue the things that are currently not taught in school. So that's where the idea for Crystalline Academy kind of developed. And basically me and Cameron started working together on it. We both had this same goal of being able to provide people something that they could come to, to learn everything that you wouldn't learn in school and all these other routes that you could possibly take with your life, like the routes that we did. Put every waking minute into it and it is impossible to fail. If you never give up, you will never fail. And that is what I'm gonna leave this conversation on you guys. I appreciate all you watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, leave a thumbs up, drop a comment below something that you learned, or if that story helped you feel inspired in any way, I reply to every comment and I love to talk to you guys. My name is Jeremy Ray and I'll see you in the next video.